How's it going guys? Um, welcome to how to be a sound engineer. Uh, this channel, I show you how to do different tricks and tips and how to record, how to mix, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, real quick. I also do live streams of my studio sessions. Sometimes it's just me working on my own music or maybe for somebody else. Sometimes I may have clients in here, um, or guests in here recording and I do live streams on Twitch. Uh, the link is above and in the description below. All right. So uh, today we're going to talk about gain staging. Um, so this is where gain, if you don't know what gain staging is, gain staging is basically the levels in between as it passes from one piece of gear to another or one plug to another, as most of you work in the digital world in the box nowadays on your laptops or computers or whatever. Um, but the same principles apply whether you're using hardware or using software. So, uh, first, um, we're going to use a project that I'm working on, um, for my youngest brother, actually, he has a video game, YouTube channel, um, where he just stream or he, I guess he doesn't really stream. He records what, uh, his video game play with his friends or whatever. And, uh, anyway, he needed a bunch of music for, um, his videos. So I've been working on different types of, uh, he wanted different moods and different styles of music, just kind of mix up things and put things in there depending on what was going on in the game. So this is one track that I've been working on. Um, it's not done, but it uh, gives you an idea. So we'll talk about what is going on here. And it'd be great. It has, has some great things that we can show you. Uh, though the game staging is pretty well set up in this as far as for the most part, but there's a few things I could show you where we can make some improvements in the game staging or making things at least easier. Um, so first let's take a listen to the track or at least part of it. And, um, we'll take note of a few things. Um, what I'll do is I'll right down here is my master track. Um, so as you notice, there's two screens you can see there's, the, on the big screen, you see the tracking view. On the small screen above me, you see the mixing screen, the mixing console screen. Um, I work with multiple screens because I find it much more efficient and useful. I hate paging back and forth and it takes away from my workflow. So I opt to have multiple screens. I actually use four, sometimes five screens in my studio at any given time for different purposes. So, but uh, so you'll see right here, um, we're going to watch, and this, and this is going to actually show us, and I'll turn this on. This will actually show us our levels basically as a waveform coming across and we'll be able to see our levels on our master bus right here. Um, you'll also be able to see them over here on the small screen, but it's easier to see for you guys over here. So let's play it real quick and take a listen and, and look at where everything is. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, so now that you took a little bit of listen to it, um, you can see that the gain stage, we're nowhere near clipping on anything here. We get up to about negative six at the peaks, which is great. Um, this is kind of a more somber song, so it doesn't really need to be loud. It doesn't need to be in your face. So I didn't, when I recorded things, I took that in consideration. Um, I kept things soft where I thought um, they should be for this type of, of track. Um, so as you can see, that reflects that. Now, if we had, say this track was clipping, say it was, we were up like this, which it isn't, but let's pretend these are like, this is zero here where that actually thing is, where, where the, let's pretend this is zero, you know what I mean, at the top. So we can, we could do a couple of things. Like we like the overall balance, but we need to turn it all down. Um, and uh, one way we can actually, hold on, let, let's, uh, Let's make, let's just for, for 
to show my point here, we'll we'll drop in a uh, drop this in here, and this is just a trimmer. So, and I'll explain this its usefulness um, in a minute regarding uh, some other things, but uh, regarding excuse me uh, the fader levels and the resolution, this will be super helpful for us there. But I'm just going to drive home a point here to show you what we're talking about. So let's turn this up, say to like somewhere around eight or nine. Um, now let's take a listen. Okay, obviously that's way too high. The gain's way too high on it. We're getting all kinds of noise and whatnot. Um, but that's, we're just showing a point here. What we could do if this was the actual level of all the tracks, say say you got, you were mixing a track, somebody sent you a bunch of stuff, and this is generally the level that came in. It was like coming in around, it was peaking a little bit here and there, and it was just, it was just generally too hot. Well, what you could do, and, and maybe none of these tracks are clipping by themselves, which would be ideal, you know, I mean, but you may have some that are, and you may have to deal with that in different ways. But first, what we want to do is bring down the our master level on our master fader. Um, but we don't want to bring it down the fader itself. We want to keep that at zero, uh, at least for the time being. What you want to do, we're pretending this is not here. Move that out of the way. Um, what we could do is we could do a couple things. We could go through and... Um, Go select all of our clips so um, if we were to oh, let's minimize all these things for a second make it easier um, we can go through and select all our clips here and uh, we could right click on it and different, different uh, DAWs will do this differently but uh we can we can apply trimming. I think that's what I'm looking for. Maybe not. Hold on. I think I just trimmed off the dead space. My bad. Uh, I usually don't do it that way. So that's what I was, I was looking. I was like, oh, it has trim right there. It doesn't. Okay. So we have apply effect, and we can go to gain, and this is where basically we can we could drop down. There's defaults here, and then we can also just go, you know, say we need to drop it down. We drop it down maybe like 10 dB or something, or 11 dB, whatever. We'll make sure it's even, obviously. And then you apply that. And then now it should um, fix that problem. Now let's listen. All right, as you can see on this on the master fader, now our levels were back down to about where they were before. So that's a quick way to do it. Um, depending on the DAW, let's and I'm gonna undo all this and get rid of this because I don't actually need that in here. But that would be one way to do it. Some DAWs actually have um, a gain inputs for uh, your before it hits any effects or anything. So if you look on the second screen, I don't know how well you can see it, but I have at the top here above all my channels, there's these gain knobs. And let me minimize these. You know, those are extra things. So I have all these gain knobs here that I could turn those those up and down to, to whatever I need. Um, and let, let me talk about something else real quick. Sometimes I may want to push something um, into a plugin kind of hot. Like I may want to crunch 
I may want to have some distortion in my in my compression. I may want to have some distortion coming into uh, going in in and out of a plug-in um, or a piece of hardware. Um, and that's really cool when you're doing it with with uh, pieces of hardware like preamps that uh, are like tube compressed. They can kind of sound kind of gritty and really cool. Um, tube compressors. Uh, I like. I personally like sending things in kind of extra hot into into tubes if I can sometimes. And it depends on the track. It depends on the feel that you're going for. But um, so that you can use your gain staging as a way, as almost a, as a plug-in in a sense, um, as, a, as an effect in itself. So it doesn't, you don't always have to be like, make sure it's never clipping, never clip. I mean... Sometimes you may want that clipping sound, so just keep that in mind. But we're talking about balancing things right now. So, um, an, so as you're coming in and out of plugins, you want to make sure that uh, that uh, uh, your input and outputs balance. So, like in this plugin, for example, I believe there's an input gain. Uh, no, there's not. But there's a there's makeup gain. Uh, no looking for hold on um yeah here we go perfect example a lot of plugins not all like the previous plugin didn't have that control the input output control some don't so that's where maybe a trim would come in handy if you need to drive something or bring something back uh, before it goes into another plugin so you can always use a trim plugin for that and I'm going to show you another cool thing regarding the faders and the, and the trim here in a second. But we're, we're, we have this input and output right here. So we can, signal coming in, we can adjust how hot that signal is before it gets to the effects processing of the plug-in or, or the unit, the piece of hardware. We can adjust that, what, how, hot, how hot of a signal we want to give that effects. And then the output of that obviously and that sets up to go into another plug-in go into a fader uh, the the signal coming out and then you can take that and you, you send it off through auxiliary sends to buses to whatever you want to do routing wise but this gives you control in and out and that's and that way you can balance your levels now let's go on to the f talking about faders real quick so faders gen they're basically they come after all your uh plugins so let's take a look at sax track here which is number six which i have selected um so as you see down here we're showing negative 12.2 on the uh fader okay so that's pretty low i mean depending on whether i need to automate that or or make fine tune adjustments it can be difficult it's not so difficult down this area it's when you're really down like the negative 20s negative 30s um where you really lose a lot of what's called resolution Resolution um, is a lot better when you're near zero. So when you're in this area, the top part of the fader, from like negative six to plus six, that's where your highest resolution is, where you can make fine-tune adjustments much easier. When you get farther and farther down the fader, those fine-tune adjustments disappear. It becomes more broad. broad. Um, so if you have to write automation or detailed automation or... Um, make fine tune adjustments, it's better to have that fader up here. Well, you're like, I don't want the volume that high. Well, I understand. So we can get around that. So real quick, I'm going to come pull up this sax track here. And here's a section here. I'm going to play like from here and go like this. And we'll just, we'll loop that section. All right. So we're going to play it real quick and take a listen. Okay, so on, on there we could see that the fader was, the volume was around negative 33 to 30 or so. Somewhere in that range, right? Well, so you want to make fine-tune adjustments to that. Or at least have the option to do maybe automation rides. Maybe there's some peaks in here I don't like and I want to automate the volume later. Um, but I need to set that up. So I could try to automate it where it's at. It's going to be a little more challenging because of how, um, if I want to actually use the fader, 
uh, to, to automate it, um, which I highly suggest. It makes it super cool and easy to do. And there's just, it's a cool factor. So I, I recommend getting a control surface, control surface if you don't already have one. Uh, you can get like uh, the Presence fader port, great cheap it's like a hundred bucks or 120 bucks or something it allows you to do that it's small it's you can bring your laptop cool anyway um so say i need to do that i need to set it up and i need more resolution so i need to bring that fader up here well i'm gonna apply i already set, brought this in here just to show you so this trimmer we're gonna turn it on so it's on so i know it's it's sitting at negative 12.2 so let's let's try bring it to zero so we're gonna bring this down to negative 12.2, or right in that area. There we go, negative 12.2. Now we can bring this volume back up to zero, right there. And now we have, uh, it should be the same volume. Now let's take a listen again. All right, as you can see or hear, that volume is right where it is. The, the meter is right at the same place. Um, so now we have more. Now we have more resolution. Now we can make uh, fine-tuned controls in a place where we have more resolution. So, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically gain staging right there. Um, just uh, make sure you're come when you're coming into your master bus that uh, you leave room, uh, especially for it to be mastered. Um, whether it's you or somebody else, make sure you have uh, at least I recommend about six dB. Um, try to get your master output to that point. So you want to bring your levels, get your levels set to where your master bus or your mix bus is sitting at negative six or so before mastering. You can always bring the volume up if it's too low with a limiter um, and stuff in the mastering phase. It's much easier to do. Uh, again, don't be afraid to, though to uh, push um, push your gain staging in certain places um, if you're trying to accomplish a certain effect or, or something of that nature. Because sometimes you can get some really cool cool sounds. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe. I'm gonna try to release three videos a week. Um, probably, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays is my plan. So, uh, with tips and tricks, and then don't forget, uh, I'm live streaming my studio sessions on Twitch. Um, and the link for that is also in the description below, um, as well as in this video. So have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.